So yeah. hi everyone to today's talk show and today we have with us Dr. Reshma. She is the founder of Rida Wellness and before I speak anything about her, I would like her to speak about herself and tell us how this all started and what led her to start Rida Wellness Foundation. <laughs> Hi, hi, Sakshi, and uh, it's an absolute pleasure and honor to be associated with you to showcase my uh, journey in life as an entrepreneur, as a doctor. So my journey started 17 years back when I passed out of medical school. Uh, to be very specific, I qualified uh, as a bachelor's of homeopathic medicine and surgery. And uh, uh, in the year 2005, I started my clinical practice. It's been 17 years now. Like any other newbie doctor, it was a very general practice that I started with, with an open heart and welcomed any and every kind of patient and case that came across my way. Uh, however, as years passed by, I uh, kind of uh, was able to connect the dots between uh, the manifestation of illness in the physical form uh, to an associated underlying root cause, which is uh, almost always emotional. Be it childhood history, childhood traumas, past emotional traumas or emotional ups and downs, they make an impact on our being, right? And that's where uh, and being a homeopath, uh, homeopathy is a holistic science. We always consider not just the physical manifestation of illness, but also the mind and the soul and the emotions behind uh, uh, the expression of symptoms. So while we were taught all of this in theory, uh, coming back to practice and gaining a, a great uh, handhold uh, on the emotional part is really a difficult journey because you know tapping into emotions uh, requires a lot of trust between us and the patient, between a doctor and a patient. So that's where you know soon as time passed, I realized that I could tap into the emotions really, really well. Patients started trusting me with their emotional stories and uh, emotional histories of the past, and um, because tapping into the root cause was possible, cure or healing started happening faster than what was expected. That's how I was able to build the, uh, the trust and gain confidence of my patients. And that's how my uh, clinical practice evolved more specifically to be into, you know, emotional well-being. And I like to call it emotional well-being rather than mental health or psychological well-being because, you know, emotion is something that is so human to all of us. Emotion is something that we can feel and associate with. Right. So that's how uh, my journey uh, evolved. And during the course of my journey, um, uh, say in, uh, you know, uh, 2014, 15, I, uh, uh, life went for a toss. There were some unfortunate incidences that happened. Uh, and uh, that propelled me to think deep about human existence and uh, the association of the current illness scenario with things that we consume uh, unconsciously. Uh, for example, uh, we all apply paints on our walls. We all uh, have uh, furnishings and uh, uh, you know uh, cushions and curtains. We all use ACs, right? But all of these things emit a lot of poisonous and toxic uh, uh, substances into the environment, which we are absorbing through the skin, which is the largest organ on the human body, uh, and very porous. Plus, we are inhaling all of these things continuously, 24 by 7. And we are not even aware that what about what we are inhaling. So if, we, if any one of us does a quick Google search on what are the toxins emitted through paints, we will realize, oh my God, what are we breathing day in and day out? And that's where, you know, probably there are links associated. Researches are still going on. Some of them have been proven. Some of them are still undergoing uh, a lot of uh, deep researches to uh, identify and understand the current illness scenario, especially the lifestyle related or, you know, the uh, uh, end stage diseases, including cancer uh, and the association of our current lifestyle. And then we have not even spoken about things that we consume and apply on a daily basis. The foods that we consume are loaded with pesticides. The cosmetics that we apply on our body are full of chemicals that are harmful to the body. Cumulatively, drop by drop, every day since the time we are born to whatever age we are till now, the cumulative effect is humongous, right? And that's where uh, the realization of being a conscious prescriber of what is good for my patients and what is not 
made me uh, take a call on you know uh, what do i actually suggest and uh, is it really worthy of the suggestions is it really a mindful choice i have to be conscious if i need to spread the consciousness to my clients to my patients and that's where my journey of evangelizing natural remedies which were uh, predominantly used in the past but somewhere as we progressed into a modern lifestyle in the hustle and bustle of daily lifestyle things became easy because of commercialization uh, they were available off the shelf and we started replacing traditional uh, uh, resources with something that's really easy to grab and uh, be on the go but we compromised on our health and well-being outcomes so that's where the concept of rida wellness actually uh, you know started shaping up when i started talking more about a chemical free lifestyle did a lot of uh, guest speaker sessions at various corporates institutions organizations got a lot of visibility uh, only to realize that um, speaking uh, and appreciation by the audience is really good but the audience feedback came back after some time saying that this is something really wonderful we really want to inculcate it but habit is something that we find difficult to change and that's where the only a uh, couple of things that i found could change the habit was to have a replacement one uh, and to continue the momentum of educating people to and hence the product line as a replacement to the uh, chemical laden products in the ecosystem and the workshops as a you know as a continuation of education to empower people make conscious choices based on their lifestyle so as to improve their health and well-being that's that's how my entire journey shaped up so far wow that's an amazing story and uh, like it gives us a real uh, uh, a lot of insights of how you know our human body works and sometimes we don't pay attention to it and suddenly mm-hmm. something like you know major starts happening and that's when we realize that there's something wrong and sometimes like changes are noticeable sometimes they are unnoticeable yeah like you never know like you know because uh, there's something that i have been through recently like in the past 3 4 months where i was detected with the eye uh, eye infection uh, which like you know i never had a eye uh, related problem since my birth uh, there was no no issues related to eyes and suddenly like i started losing my eyesight due to this infection and it was so right. bad that i was left only with 10% of my visibility of the eyes oh uh, that was in the mm-hmm. month of like november and like oh. you know, october november december like these were the three months like where you know uh, things were like from bad then it went worse and finally of like course. we could get a solution where like you know it could be treated with medicines only and surgery was not something that was needed for this and it was something internal infection so sometimes you never know what's there inside right. your body that's causing some of the disturbances and suddenly like something happens and you realize that you need to take care of that part of your body uh, right. so uh, that's that's very insightful of you and that's very thoughtful of you to create such a uh, structure where like you know you're helping people a lot with not only with giving information but also in implementing those things in their lives and how they are yeah. moving ahead so i'm damn yeah. sure like you know uh, you might be creating a lot of like you know a lot of uh, wellness histories in your company where like people <laughs> are feeling good about themselves they are feeling good about their health so uh, talking about like how this all started and like uh going a little bit more deep into it because uh, that is something that uh, starters normally uh, they face difficulties in that is managing their funds uh, like we have seen right. people like you know we start our businesses at a very good uh, very good energy uh, level right. where we say hey whatever i have i'm ready to give into my business and we literally you know give more than that sometimes people even took uh, take debts they take loans and all and it becomes really very difficult to manage funds at certain stages and especially mm-hmm. when you are doing uh, a lot of things together you don't know how to handle them as an entrepreneur right. as a person who's running business solo or like with a small number of teams because then you have to devote your funds to different sections of your business so like right. how you did it for your business and like how did it move from that stage all right so honestly speaking uh, sachi uh, i was a, always a small time uh, homeopath a very you know uh, a very mediocre homeopath who uh, you know kind of was more than happy helping people um, so commercials from the clinical uh, aspect was nothing on the agenda uh, however um, 
you know, there's a story uh, again that goes into uh, the actualization of Riza Wellness as a brand. And um, in the year 2014, um, uh, my second younger daughter was born, uh, but unfortunately she was born with some problems. Um, she was born without uh, an esophagus, the food pipe that we uh, swallow food and uh, water with. And uh, the condition uh, again is a rare uh, congenital birth disorder. Um, it was expected to be a minor one. Unfortunately, it was a major problem. Uh, and she underwent a lot of major surgeries uh, for uh, say one and a half year of her uh, life. And when the final surgery was supposed to happen where the, uh, you know, the two open ends of the uh, esophagus were supposed to be connected uh, so that she can uh, propel her food down through the mouth uh, into the stomach. The surgery was successful, but she landed up into post-operative complications. She fought in the PICU for her life for a good two and a half, three months, and then we lost her. Um, there were a lot of learnings. I mean, every aspect of life teaches us something. Here, there were a lot of learnings. Me being a doctor, uh, faced a lot of challenges in raising a child born with congenital birth defect, where there were a lot of added precautions that were to be taken. The child needs to be cared like that, like. Uh, like you take care of a child in a very, uh, you know, sterile environment, like in an ICU kind of a setup. All health hygiene aspects need to be considered, plus the emotional and social impact that comes along with it was really, really humongous, specifically because, you know, people talk about all sorts of karma and bad karma and, you know, destiny, um, which at that point of time, when you're in a vulnerable situation, seems like, you know, uh, a far distant uh, thought process to consider. And uh, it doesn't help, but adds to the woes of a mother or a parent, you know. Uh, and then uh, the lack of social support, because people are not aware of these problems. So they really don't know how to support uh, in their own way to a, uh, to a couple or a parent, trying parents trying to raise similar children. Um, so there were a lot of learnings on emotions, behavior, social aspect, medical aspect, healthcare uh, availability in spite of being into in, in, a, uh, in a good city, the challenges that we face, and then meeting other parents who were struggling with their kids' uh, congenital birth defects and they were belonging to rural areas. You know, lots of learning happened in that phase. And uh, eventually, uh, when I lost Rida, I was shattered. I did not have the courage to stand up again not as a mother and not as a doctor as well. But uh, the thought that uh, I could not save my daughter and how do people trust me with their own well-being, their own life, when they come to a doctor, they trust me with their life, uh, was the guilt conscious that was bothering me. But people around me kind of kept on telling me that if Rida sees you like this, her soul is watching over you and if she sees you like this, she would not be, her soul would not be happy. That remained with me. Um, I had never seen death so closely before this. I had never uh, understood or tried to understand the soul journey or, you know, the spiritual part of lifestyle before this. But the little hope that, you know, even if she's not with me in physique, but her soul continues to remain, gave me a lot of courage. Yeah. To stand up and show my best face forward. To stand up in front of her and show her that you know i am i am your strong mama i am not weak i'm timid i will continue to do whatever i can in my capacity and that's where my uh, uh, journey of finding my purpose now what uh, what do i do now kind of started i slowly regained my foothold back into my clinic only to be surprised that you know god was kind enough i got a lot of more complicated cases and I could help them further, which reinstilled the lost confidence back in me that nothing changed on the professional work front. And then I decided to do something for the children or the families that are struggling to um, raise children born with congenital birth defects. But then during her treatment, um, you know, medical expenses are really, really, uh, uh, you know, not variable, uh, especially in the Indian economy. We don't have social support services. We don't have a lot of options back then in 2014-15 there was no keto there was no milap or you know areas where we could raise funds and we ended up um, 
utilizing all of our savings plus we ended up taking uh, you know high interest uh, loans uh, which we could utilize or you know utilize for uh, settling the hospital bills on a daily basis and uh, that's when we realized that you know uh, starting with a uh, a, a foundation or a, a, a NGO to support uh, children born with congenital birth defects uh, would not be the right choice at that point of time uh, and it really hurt us very badly. Um, one of my friends was a marketing consultant and he told me that Dr. Reshma you speak a lot on chemical free lifestyle, on a sustainable lifestyle, you know how you can make conscious choices, what are the options that you can use why don't you start utilizing that expertise of yours and build a brand around it and maybe if you cannot start a foundation in Rida's memory right now why don't you start a new brand in her name which will constantly make you connected with her feel connected with her and do justice to whatever social impact you're trying to create and tomorrow if everything works out fine uh, you you will be able to create the foundation as well and start supporting children born with congenital birth defects that really hit me in a positive way and that's where i started the product range uh, and i started keeping small small things like you know uh, epsom salt to detoxify uh, yourself at least once a week if not more or you know uh, i started studying about natural ways to um uh, to uh, uh, to you know uh, have better hair health rather than using or relying on shampoos which are loaded with chemicals uh, and that's how my uh, uh, deep dive into acquiring more and more knowledge about natural remedies happened and i started formulating uh, products from you know um, herbs and flower essences and flower extracts and ocean minerals and they shaped up really beautifully well. I had people ready to try out the products because of my strong clinical history and uh, rapport with my patients. They came down, they used the products, they found a lot of benefit. So the initial customer validation and then the improvement on the product part based on feedbacks, improvement on the packaging, improvement on the way the products are being utilized from the packaging is also really important all that journey happened after the building of mvp uh, the minimum viable product ke baad wala journey uh, happened and then we were able to improvise on a lot of aspects right from the look and feel to the ingredients to the way the product uh, uh, feels on the skin most i mean when, when i started it was it was mostly on external applications and then slowly um, you know we added products uh, which can be consumed as well uh, natural products like a simple hibiscus desan it's a floral uh, uh, infusion that helps that has a lot of health benefits um, and to add to that it has got a beautiful color and a beautiful flavor as well so people started loving the combination of you know uh, benefits on the well-being plus good uh, good look and feel good uh, flavors you know the experience part of it i realized there were some feedbacks that you know if some of the like i started preparing roll-ons for emotional well-being my first two roll-ons were stress relief roll-on and sleep well roll-on because these wow. are very common problems and we don't do anything about it so my motto was why shake it off you know so we, we don't have to shake off any kind of emotional issues that we are facing. Let's uh, adapt to natural remedies. And these rollers were made by a combination of flower essences that were non-aromatic. Uh, and then I got a feedback that, you know, uh, they don't have a smell, you know. So the appeal of or the need for uh, uh, using it again uh, was missing. And that's where uh, we, uh, we started to uh, research on uh, the essential oil part of the plant extracts. And started combining aromatherapy with uh, the non not the non uh, aromatic uh, essences that we were using in emotional wellness roll-ons. And today I have seven emotional wellness roll-ons tackling not just stress, not just sleep, but also uh, um, anxiety, uh, anger issues, and even peace. Uh, you know, people who lack the calmness in life. Uh, and the pandemic proved to be one more avenue where we could help people uh, coping up with grief with a grief. hope shines on roll on which helps people uh, support uh, the journey in grief 
so that's how uh, you know things shaped up now in all of this coming back to the phase where uh, you know there were no funds and my friend uh, guided me to start with something that i already have the resource was powerful it was knowledge it was experience and expertise versus money there was no money but i started with very small things like you know uh, packaging uh, uh, in plastic pouches or plastic bottles or you know uh, and then as things started improving uh, kind of you know the food truck journey continued and then improvement happened and then we decided to reserve 10% of uh, after taxes profit that we get to support children who are born with congenital birth defects so at the end of it starting from a journey where there were no funds to uh, uh, make a social impact to you know uh, making tweaks in what i already have in the form of knowledge uh, and executing it without uh, having to invest any funds uh, to uh, being able to support the cause that was initially uh, being felt as lost all of this happened uh, without uh, raising any funds so i strongly believe in the fact that if you have if you have the passion if you have the determination and grit you even if you don't have money you can still pave your way to build a minimum viable product from where you can build on further and if you have the right passion you can reach out to the right kind of audience and convince them to uh, you know uh, try out your products or services and once they are convinced do not forget them continue to keep engaging with them to take relevant feedbacks and improvise your product and services so that you can scale up your journey beyond that that's how i would like to uh, you know wind up the answer to your question wow i i think that's that's like you know a cycle that you have completed <laughs> like a whole business <laughs> cycle but definitely like a very inspirational and an inspire uh, insightful story where like uh, i i like being a mom i can i can say like you know i am i'm very proud to be connected with you because uh, like somewhere yeah. it feels good not only to know you as a person but also like you know where you, uh, the places where you have created impact i i uh, i can truly believe like you know that people people will believe in you because everything is genuine so like you know being genuine uh, being kind understanding the customers needs also as a business owner is something that we need and as we add value along with like uh, uh, like whatever uh, whenever like i talk to uh, people also like you know um, whenever i do my consulting i normally tell people that you know you need to add value because till the time you don't okay. add value to uh, like whatever product or service you are giving you will not get back the value in terms of roi so if you need roi mm-hmm. you need to create value to create the value Absolutely. system roi turns out to be your like you know best friend in the year to come True. so that True. that is something that i say and like uh, like i think your uh, whole journey is something that justifies like you know what we say every time repeatedly that we need to add right. values uh, sometimes right. it also happens like you know some of the industries are very structured you know they are already pre existing like uh, right. i remember homeopath as something like you know those uh, round and round circles <laughs> uh yes. small small medicines which we used to right. take uh just for fever or like you know from my childhood where like you know my yeah. uh, parents uh, used to give us homeopathy because sometimes allopathy used to be a lot allergic on uh, kids yes. bodies so uh, if yeah. you are allergic to certain bodies parents definitely they shift to homeopathy and it's a very structured yeah. market and like you have entered around somewhere like when you are talking about 2014 2018 uh so i think that's that's very new uh, time where you have entered so like how did you manage to uh, bridge that gap between today's homeopath and like the homeopath that existed earlier and like uh, yes. what what is that unique thing that you provide with rida wellness absolutely and a lovely question uh, sakshi i must appreciate you for this deep thought process involved behind uh, you know this question Uh, so uh, homeopathy has always been known as the sugar pill you know sabudana goli that we call in india here yeah. uh, and people relate it with uh, that uh, because that has been a very traditional way of dispensing homeopathic medicine in the form of white uh, sugary globules right now while that's a traditional form uh, there are several ways in which homeopathic medicine can be consumed um and that's where uh, my solutions also came into place out of again i always emphasize on customer feedbacks 
so um, as my practice improved and i had a lot of my patients who were into uh, business or they were into corporate lifestyle i realized that they were taking long time to follow up on the scheduled appointments and that made me inquire with them what is taking uh, long where is it that the missing link uh, can be found out and can we improvise on that and i got to hear from them uh, that you know uh, we usually as homeopaths we give medicines in two formats one is the bottle in which the pills are there or uh, you know in some cases we also give uh, liquid in dropper bottles you know now in both the cases uh, the common thread was uh, either uh, you know it was not possible especially for the men to carry the medicines to workplace or if they are in a field job to carry it because you know i mean they have their own challenges probably they are not used to carrying a bag separately like we women carry bag and all the nitty gritty things inside our purses and bags uh, but that was the feedback from the men uh, 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 you know um, uh, community from uh, uh, my patients uh, community and they told me that it is difficult to carry the medicines hence subah sham or uh, when whenever they are home they take the medicine other times they are not able to consume the medicine okay the second aspect that was seen is that even if they carry the medicine to the office sometimes they are sitting with clients sometimes with colleagues sometimes in a meeting um two aspects that came across was that you know when they are involved in work it is not possible to uh, uh, actually uh, realize that it's time to consume a medicine and uh, sometimes they also found it uh, awkward to consume medicine in front of other people because people tend to ask or uh, you know uh, raise a query about if everything is okay they don't want to be seen as someone who is not well someone who is sick now these were really important feedbacks if i hadn't inquired about it i wouldn't have known the patient side of journey you know for me it's easy to sit in my clinic and Uh, advise people, or uh, you know, maybe uh, scold them for not being uh, uh, strict or disciplined about the medicinal consumption. But understanding their pain point helped me realize that it's not possible to change the world. It is possible for me to change my ways so that they can benefit out of the medicine without having to compromise on so many aspects. And that's where I decided that I need to change the way I am giving them giving them my medicines, right? and that's where i started ditching the pills and the liquids or maybe you know um, standardizing them to the timings when they can be at probably at bed time or you know uh, when uh, they are uh, at home before leaving for work kind of thing even for children once they are in school how do they consume the medicine especially for chronic problems or even if it's an acute issue uh, the pills are or the medicines are with the parents at home and the child is at school so in all of these scenarios i realized that we need to simplify the way we are reaching out to our patients and that's where i started packing uh, the liquid medicines in the form of roll on bottles uh, even before the roll on it was spray bottles because when you know uh, when we give homeopathy to a patient who is in coma uh, or on a ventilator we don't put the medicines in the mouth we use the olfactory nerves or we use uh, you know we use the um, skin to uh, uh, give the medicines and that's where i realized that you know why not uh, it's it's about the, there are different modes of uh, dispensing or consuming a medicine and that's where i started using skin and uh, an olfactory nerves uh, to benefit people and people started loving the way uh, this made makes them uh, independent of you know uh, judgments and bias or you know following strict timelines a roll on is something that fits anywhere in a wallet or a purse or it even in the pockets uh, of shirts and pants and that's where people started loving the solutions and uh, evolved a different kind of uh, a medicine dispensing journey and then uh, moved on to add aromatherapy to it uh, to give more benefit because the olfactory nerves are the closest to the brain and they make a very quick impact on the well being and uh, just a knowledge of science uh, and uh, a connection with the root of my system of medicine help me pivot the ways of dealing with better results in easier ways so the key over here that i learned is 
if I need to see the change around me, I mean, of course, Mahatma Gandhi has uh, told this, be the change that you would like to see around the world. Uh, so I decided to be the change myself rather than expecting people to change their routines and disciplines or mindset because that was far more easy and it was far more fun to evolve with adaptations. So that's, that's how it shaped up. Uh, so I think the key is here is like, you know, that you need to understand what your customer needs and draft like, you know, uh, customize your product accordingly so that it can really help Absolutely. That, that Absolutely. You know, brings in uniqueness in your business. Yes, Sakshi, we have heard uh, stalwarts talking about, you know, you can, you can be the king uh, of knowledge and uh, experience and expertise. But just because you believe that this is the solution, does not mean that your product is a good market fit. So to identify if your product or service is a good product market, has a good product market fit, you really need to go into the market and understand from the consumers what is their pain point and what are the solutions that they are looking forward to and then fit your product to the market. I think that's, that's where the beauty of what all the big people out there keep on telling us is in breaking it down into simple ways and implementing them in our businesses. Yeah, right. Uh, rightly said, you know, implementers are the winners. So like however knowledge yeah. you take, but till the time you don't implement it to bring out a solution, uh, that won't help right. you. So right. uh, I guess that's that's the key point here to take. And uh, thank you so much for like so many insights that you are giving on the way during this conversation. <laughs> and definitely like, you know, uh, there, there are uh, different needs of a business like if we talk about like we talked about funding we talked about like what's your usp and like coming to the next point where we uh where we say like you know legalities are something that are a part of business so like if we go on yes. with a normal business it's okay like you know you just have some uh, some uh, registrations to be done and like you know you are just ready to start but if we talk about right. like the basic uh businesses like uh, who are the like you know the roots of the system the business systems especially food industries yes. medical industries like you know these these are the living basics of humans that we call them so yeah, right. uh, like what what uh, were the like you know struggles that you had to fix out the legalities for like creating with wellness because definitely like when you're creating something new in the market you need to get a lot of approvals and a lot of yeah. like things must have gone before like getting approvals for like all these uh, yeah. products and services that you provide today so uh, yeah. how did you move about it Right. So uh, a very interesting journey uh, with its own ups and downs, for sure. The market, the pharma uh, ecosystem or the, uh, uh, you know, the cosmetic ecosystem, because most of our products are applied on the skin um, and the food ecosystem is a very, very uh, big market or big, big ecosystem. There are stalwarts sitting out there. and. Um, there is a lot of commercialization that is needed to you know uh, gain entry into the market with all the compliances and all so uh, the key over here was to start small uh, and introduce small solutions rather than big ones we started with just two products uh, rather three products uh, two emotional wellness roll-ons and one uh, is the epsom salt for detoxification uh, that's how we started and uh, even though we wanted to scale up like pretty fast because uh, as entrepreneurs, we are very passionate about our uh, work and we really want to uh, bring more and more products into the market as soon as we can. We realize that we really need to um, uh, slow down on the pace because there are compliances that need to be fulfilled. And uh, that's where um, uh, there were a combination of tweaks. Again, pivoting is a really important part of uh, any uh, business journey. Uh, and we need to understand uh, and sometimes let go of certain uh, aspirations to uh, be compliant with the ecosystem, right? Because the health of other people is in our hands. We should not be playing with it and should make sure that we are compliant with uh, the industrial standards so as to be able to assure and be sure that we are not compromising on the uh, consumers. Uh, and that uh, helped us slow down a bit. So we took a little longer time compared to the giants in the market uh, to come up with, you know, a product list of you know, more than 50 products where we stand today. Uh, but the key was pivoting. So wherever we uh, uh, we realized that the compliances would take longer than needed, 
we brought a product into our uh, portfolio which was a very simple solution long forgotten like herbal infusions you know uh, herbal infusions is something that is nothing but uh, like something that is consumed like a tea a replacement to our tea but minus the caffeine or minus the uh, uh, the tea leaves in actual right so uh, so when i launched hibiscus tisan uh, it was at a time um, after a lot of internal brainstorming uh, of uh, the product compliances from the fda point of view getting delayed when i launched the uh, hibiscus tisan uh, because something has to uh, be there on the shelf the momentum has to keep on going on you cannot get lost Uh, because things are not working out uh, in the pace, uh, in the pace or the speed or the way you expected them to turn around. The turnaround times can get extended for a long period of time. So pivoting was an important part, and having a plan B always helped. Uh, sometimes plan C and plan D as well. Uh, and uh, coming back to the compliances part of it, some compliances were very easy for us to obtain. some of them were really difficult so we reached out to a few people in the ecosystem to take their guidance uh, to avail their mentorship um, i told them up front uh, i am not looking at funding from you i uh, if you can handhold me and mentor me and help me understand the nitty gritties i will uh, uh, be really really grateful to you they saw the potential they saw the passion they saw the uh, ability to uh, understand things from a commercial and compliance point of view and guided um i could enter into a few collaborations with uh, uh, contract manufacturers where i could extend my formulations to them and they could get it done in a small a small quantity also it was all about reaching out to the right people sharing them about their about my problems and solutions and convincing them that they can be of great help for a good value addition to the ecosystem so um, asking for help is something that really helped us in the compliance part of it um, of course uh, we are in the process of setting up our own uh, manufacturing unit uh, the work is underway uh, we have the support of uh, some really uh, good lawyers Uh, some really good um, food and drug inspectors who have been great mentors this department is something that we are really scared of you know but uh, when we actually you know i actually went in and started to sit down and talk to them you know that's that's where i i realized that if i need to be a master in this industry and if i if i can learn about the perfection of compliances the the best people that can guide me is the ones who are sitting in the department right so i walked in built in a rapo started sitting with them asking them silly and stupid questions but they were graceful enough to help me with uh, you know knowledge and information and that something coming from the food and drug department directly makes you feel empowered that you know uh, i am gaining the right information rather than googling up and goofing up right and that helped me build on from scratch but with confidence and with the right people and processes in place so i think i think it's important to ask for help here i not only went into the ecosystem and asked from people who are manufacturing drugs people who are manufacturing cosmetics people who are manufacturing herbal products but i also barged into the fda and took help from them also so it's it's important to shun the shame and the fear and approach the right people at the right time and there are lots of people to guide you you know i always i i always get this question on forums that you know um people do not help or guide you and i always tell them have you approached in the the right person in the right way you know it's really important to be uh, truthful and approach people uh, okay. and 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 help is never a way i i've seen help from random people i have seen help from expert people also without them knowing me i've, I've taken help on financial work uh, balance sheets as well from finance experts in the first meeting itself so it's about how we approach how we create an impact on the people that can guide us and handhold us and then everything becomes an easy cakewalk after that
Yeah, and uh, somewhere, somewhere it also reaches you like, you know, shortcuts won't work in business. Uh, like we have seen a lot of people when we talk about legalities and stuff like, you know, there are, there are a lot of people who will promise you that, you know, we can give you licenses within a month, within this, within that. Yeah. But uh, they will give you, but then what after that? Like, you know, if you are thinking yeah. about the long term go of your business, these things won't right. work and it takes time to right. build. Like, as you said, like, you know, you had to slow down your pace and then you had to sit with all the legalities, put them in place and then move ahead with the new range of your products right. so right. that that is like a thought process that a business needs that if you need to go ahead if you need to scale up this is something that you have to do and you must do it the right way if it takes time it's okay to take that halt of around one month two months or like take your operations little slow till the time like you get the things fixed so uh, a very very uh, really very practical approach that you had towards your business and uh, and like you know it's it's very it's very good to talk about uh, that uh, we take help because uh, you know that always every business will not have 100% of everything. Definitely you need people outside from the industry where uh, who are the experts who have already done, who have the experiences and uh, those experiences can help us build our businesses better. So it's always good to take help. So definitely like that, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's an eye opener. Like if you're going a shortcut way, never go a shortcut way. Take the mm-hmm. full, take the full uh, leverage of the people around in the market. Talk to them, mm-hmm. talk to uh, like people, and uh, take that advantage of approaching them with what you have, and then build something okay. new. In the process, you might end up build, building really a unique product that you never know that you could build, that you could create. So mm-hmm. definitely, you really nice. I would like to add something over here. This just struck me. I was, I mean, networking is the key over here when we are talking about you know connecting with the right people. A network need not be, you know, many times uh, entrepreneurs make a mistake where we kind of believe that networking is all about acquiring business. It can help in acquiring business, yes, but we should think about networking beyond acquisition of business as well. There are a lot of aspects on which networking can help. And uh, in one of uh, a similar events, like, you know, uh, one of my networking uh, uh, related successful relationship that was built with uh, an entrepreneur. He happened to be a, a president of the uh, Indo-Japan business. Uh, 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 you know, they call it a conglomeration. Yeah, Indo-Japan business conglomeration. And uh, he happened to invite me to an indo Netherlands business conglomeration. Yeah, uh, just because, uh, you know, I, I had reached out to seek help and about the markets and the ecosystem and the guidance and talk more about and see how he can mentor me. Uh, he invited me to that conglomeration and uh, there were ambassadors from Netherlands and there were entrepreneurs from here, India. It happened in India and it was a free entry, a VIP entry was free for me. And uh, when I went there, I got to learn uh, about um, a nursery uh, that was run by a mother-daughter duo uh, on the outskirts of Pune, but uh, they were cultivating uh, the flowers that were native to Netherlands and they were exporting from here. So they utilized the genetic technology of the flowers or the plants Mm -hmm. and they, yeah, and they implemented it here under, uh, and they had to make conducive uh, environment and all those things. But The unique value proposition was for me as an observer from outside was that, you know, because anything is possible, you need to have the right kind of mindset to navigate through this anything. And that's where I realized that, you know, when I have to acquire herbs to prepare the end products or I mean, I don't outsource my work or product part of it. Each product is made in house. All that I have I had outsourced in the beginning was uh, the um, uh, the uh, facility. You know, I I rented the facility and started producing on my own because right from the flower petal that I am taking in, right from the place where it has been cultivated to how the cultivation has shaped up to how it has been dried, uh, and then combining the different uh, raw materials in a certain way that some products take eight weeks uh, for the uh, you know for the life cycle of the product formation or development some products take one day so 
during this process i realized and understood that while i was uh, looking for certain herbs that were not available in india there was a big big challenge as a startup to acquire them without any import or export licenses in india the seasonal variations of certain herbs uh, made an impact and to add to that covid happened uh, so um, there were a lot of learnings from this particular nursery that you know if they could cultivate something that was innate to netherlands we can definitely start cultivating and that's where deeper research which was a back research not a forward research helped immensely so one i mean one benefit of networking could be you know finding solutions to your entire product life cycle management can be made simpler easier and pretty much doable to reduce the cost of production uh, is something that i really learned from that networking event and that's where i would like to share that do not look at networking as just an opportunity to grab business you can do much more than business from such networking events uh oh, that's amazing yes definitely like you know we take uh, networking the definition of networking is something like you know where you talk to people only about business but it's not always yeah. about business it's uh, sometimes also about exchanging knowledge experiences and like you you get to learn a lot in the process which you never thought of so uh, I, i always say like you know you read five books and you network with five people it's equal Uh, right. the books take you uh, teach you the whole process of how it's done and even the yes. people who have already done it if you network with five different people from your industry they will tell you how they have done it so uh, they they teach you the same thing so if you want to bring out a new process that that's even something yes. that uh, again like you know our thoughts go inside in this uh, in this whole uh, scenario <laughs> where like whenever i talk about networking to my clients i always tell them that like you know if you want to network or like uh, if you want to gain uh, create a process in your business Business. either you read five books about right. your business that will give you a whole idea of how the process run or you meet five different top people from your industry and ask them how they are right. running their process so right. these are only the two right. ways where you get to create a business process for like what your need is what your customer needs and what, how you want to build your brand <laughs> So, uh, like, uh, le let's now like you know talk about Rida Wellness and like what are the different products that you offer. Sure, sure. So, um, like I said, we started with very uh, simple products like simple roll-ons without any uh, aroma to it, in the form of stress and sleep uh, uh, well roll-ons. Um, the the gist of the existence of Rida Wellness is. uh the eight pillars of wellness which include uh, not just physical mental emotional spiritual psychological uh, well being but also behavioral and financial and social well being as well because they contribute to how our health and well being shapes up so um while we launched products that catered to emotional well being first we also knew that there are a lot of things that need to go on to the physical well being aspect as well like uh, we apply soap on our body every day um is there a benefit uh, of applying soap on our body yeah um does using a soap really make you feel clean or is it just in the psyche you know what are the harmful effects of using something as fully loaded with chemicals as a soap and why did we start using it so starting from here we started with the process of detoxification because we are consuming a lot of be it radiations be it uh, unseen uh, micro pollutants chemicals toxins or something that we consciously apply on our skin because we want to look and feel good right so um, that's where we uh, knew that we had to balance out not just the emotional part of our lifestyle but also the physical part of our lifestyle with something that is not just a replacement or a substitute but equally impactful as well so i started formulating natural remedies for um, you know daily skin care along with emotional well being roll ons right now when it came to daily skin care there is a very simple five step protocol to take care of your skin on a daily basis which includes you know cleaning toning uh, and then uh, deep repair uh, moisturizing hydrating and all those stuff so uh, 
that's where I realized that the most of the products on the market, if you read the labels, are full of chemicals. Even if we use a, a rose water of a particular famous brand, you open the bottle and read the label, there is a huge list of chemicals which go in probably as a preservative, probably as a fragrance or stuff like that. But is it not possible to have a pure 100% natural rose water? Yes, it is possible. So why not bring people closer to the real solutions rather than buying off the shelf just because it is seen on the shelf. That's where the education part of it started along with the positioning of the product. And if you read the label of our rose water, which we distill in-house, it contains only rose petals and water. That's all. And that's how simple our life and the products that impact our life have to be. We need not complicate our lives. We need not complicate the products that we use to live a good life, right? And that's where shaping up our products, we came into, uh, you know, uh, products that will help in uh, better skin or, uh, you know, we have a, a, a salve, uh, which salve is an application on the skin, uh, which is not watery, but it is also not like a cream. You know, and that salve is made from calendula flowers. That's all. Calendula flowers infused in oil. Calendula is a known natural antiseptic, antibiotic, antifungal. And if it is applied on the skin daily as an all purpose cream, you are not only removing the unwanted chemicals, preservatives, and extra blah blah things from the label and your life, but you are also adding a natural glow. To your skin you are feeling minor issues like acne dark pigmentations cuts burns scars from your body with natural remedies so you know the simple solution that we offer is bringing you closer to nature to live a fulfilling lifestyle and today we have more than 50 products which include uh, various types of hydrosols Hydrosols are uh, floral extracts or plant extracts that have the essential properties, the flavonoids and the uh, alkaloids of the plant or the flower, which have been proven to have therapeutic benefits. But because they are not so easily available on the shelf, especially in the Indian ecosystem, people have forgotten the use or benefits of these. So that's where we are bridging the gap of bringing in traditional flower remedies, plant remedies on the shelf so that people start adapting to simple things like rose water, which was, which has been since time uh, immemorial known as the beauty potion. Now the good thing is that the rose water that we now know that it can only be applied on the skin. The good thing is that the rose water, if it is pure and minus the chemicals, can also be consumed orally. Right? Yes. So if there is something that you can easily consume and safely consume orally, it can be easily and safely applied onto your skin. Right? So that's where, you know, we have a range of floral waters like chamomile hydrosol, lemongrass hydrosol, rose hydrosol, we have spearmint hydrosol, peppermint hydrosol, uh, ginger hydrosol with immense health and well-being benefits in the consumable form, right? We do not uh, say that, you know, our products are only for the skin application. We ask our consumers to start consuming it orally to get the maximum benefit. And of course, you can spray it on your skin or around in the room uh, because it's not just the skin that breathes. You can also breathe them through your nose and get the benefits out of it. And then we have the the skin care or the hair care uh, uh, range of products that impact your skin and hair well-being. We have floral infusions. We have uh, we call them tisans. Tisan is uh, a word which means um, herbal infusion. And uh, we started with single note tisans of chamomile, calendula, and hibiscus. And then we slowly added immunity tisan. We added gut health tisan. We added. Um, uh, you know, relaxation tisan, and we have a range of physical as well as emotional well-being tisans that can that are a hot favorite among our consumers. Roll-ons, like I mentioned, we have a range of seven emotional wellness roll-ons, and then we added a PMS roll-on uh, for women uh, well-being, 
and uh, we also added under eye roll on for you know the dark circles uh, issues that most of the people face in these days because of poor sleep and excessive screen time um we also added a uh, aroma mists um to empower us in our day to day uh, moody uh, situations and scenarios uh, we have a uh, room mist and aroma mists for um, motivation uh, for confidence um, for uh, uh, happiness uh, for sleep for zen for peace so uh, we all go through these emotional ups and downs and uh, there are moments where we don't know what to do about it you know sitting down for a meditation for how many of us is, is it possible to sit down and meditate when we are in a turmoil no i mean it, right. it's difficult you know to gather that uh, integrity and sit down and let the effect of meditation happen so we are supporting a better emotional outcome uh, in every aspect that's why we call our positions as a holistic uh, well being um, so that our consumers take benefit of the immense potential of natural remedies on the go it's it's a matter of like you know i'm sitting here and probably i am feeling anxious while preparing for the interview that we are talking right now uh, instead of lingering with the anxiety which is definitely going to affect me on the physical aspect as well why don't i just simply spray a you know a, a mood booster uh, Uh, or anxiety relieving uh, 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 room mist. I just spray it in the room, and uh, the ingredients make me feel less anxious and calm me down, right? So uh, while I successfully deliver the talk or the interview with you, I am also making sure that natural remedy is taking care of my well-being and not allowing the anxiety to affect my well-being. So that's the change that we are trying to bring with our products. Wow, oh, I think that's an amazing range of products that you have, and definitely I am going to go and check it out. Definitely, <laughs> yeah. And anyone who wants, like, I mean, all the viewers who are watching the video, the link will be given down in the description box, so you can just go check out, check it out, just try out something which can definitely bring around a change. And uh, I believe, like, whatever work you are doing right now, and you have been doing since like so many years now, uh, that that that's a special journey that you have been living. And we just wish, like, from me and my team at Mind Dynamics, we really wish you a great success in the years to come. And we definitely want to see you growing more uh, and reaching new heights. Mm-hmm. Definitely creating a lot of impact in all the other lives. Um, thank you so much for giving your time for giving the valuable insights that you have given. Like you have. Come covered a very like you know uh, immense aspects today about uh, running a business starting it funding it like whatever be the small points networking being an essential one so thank you for all the insights that you have given out in today's time in such a short duration i think like there there's nothing that that can be more uh, more insightful than this whole interview that has been today right. so thank you so much you for so spending much. the time with us today Thank you, thank you. It's been a pleasure to be uh, here with you, Sakshi, and I wish you great success. And a lot of hard work is going in. I am very sure about it. I can see the efforts that you have taken in to bring together uh, quite a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs to share their journeys. And sharing is something that definitely creates a bigger impact. So kudos to your efforts, and all the best. Wish you great success. As a business owner, I have been through journeys of ups and downs. I have been through a journey where my physical health was not supporting my mental health, and that both started conflicting and it started affecting my business. I know many of you are in such situations. I know we are in such situations as a solo business entrepreneur where we get stuck at one place and we find it very difficult to move on. Fortunately, I had mentors in my life who supported me always and helped me at every stage of my business. I could get this, but I know many people don't get this all. I could relate to the concept because I was from a corporate background, but I know the pains of the people who are not from a corporate background. They have never done jobs, but they start with a business model. Now, if you are someone who is a solo entrepreneur running a business solely, then I have something for you. 
Here is a book that I have curated specially for solo entrepreneurs and small business owners. We have some motivational stories, some business secrets revealed by some of the top entrepreneurs who are successfully doing their business today. Right away, just click down in the description box, click on the link and grab your copy today.